بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Almighty Allah the entirely merciful and the specially merciful I'd like just to remind you of the explanation of the entirely merciful and the specially merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful to all creatures humans non-humans Muslims non-Muslims every creature who is living on this planet enjoys the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the generally merciful of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time there is something called special mercy of Allah that will be given only to the believers the believers across all ages all previous ages and this kind of mercy will be given to them will be shown to them on the day of judgment so we are so eager to get the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and in the hereafter we do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower us with his mercy Amin, Amin. I do testify that there is no deity to be worshipped followed or obeyed except Almighty Allah and I do testify that his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger given to all human beings may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have peace mercy and bounty upon him Dear viewers across the globe, I begin with the greeting, your greeting, special greeting for you, which is the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be unto all of you. Ameen. Dear viewers, I remind you of the emphasis of what you're going to hear today. I hope you can acquire the knowledge. I'm quite sure that uh, many of us know it. But the most important thing is that implementing it in our life and applying it uh, during this month and in other months. All of us here, when the word, the month of Ramadan comes, we hear it always connected with the word taqwa, taqwa. And let me remind you of the word taqwa. It's processes, three processes in one to achieve taqwa. Taqwa means protection, by the way. In order to get this protection, to protect yourself from the wrath of Allah, to protect yourself from hellfire, we need to have these three processes. To be, first of all, mindful, as mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we can. All the time, remember Allah, be mindful, be conscious of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you Based on this, you develop this love and this fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't want to lose the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you believe that there is a day of judgment and there is severe torment on this day and we need to work hard on ourselves to protect ourselves to gain this protection from Almighty Allah against hellfire. These are the three processes that constitute the concept of taqwa. And you find all the time that this comes with the month of Ramadan as the verses say. For example, this is verse number 183 in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2. And this is how it reads, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyam kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon all you who believe fasting the month of Ramadan was prescribed on you as it was prescribed on the people before you and hoping hoping that you will gain taqwa so it tells us the month that the month of Ramadan is a very golden opportunity for us to acquire taqwa. And this is the hope from the month of Ramadan as it is the hope from, it is a goal, it is a target for all of us from the ibadah, all the kinds of ibadahs that we do, whether it's salah, whether it's siyam, whether it's fasting, whether it is uh, uh, zakat that we pay, whether it's hajj, yes, all these ibadahs, the goal of these ibadahs is that two things, the purification of your soul and at the same time hoping that this kind of purification would help you 
acquire as much taqwa as you can. For example, in the month of Ramadan, it's a golden opportunity because we said that in addition to the five daily prayers, obligatory prayers that we do during the day and night, these are the regular ones, ones that we do, we perform throughout the entire year, the whole year. In addition to this, we do special prayers, Salat at taraweeh and Salat at tahajjud Try to imagine with every two rakahs, even with every one rakah that you do, you acquire a layer, a layer of taqwa. And this layer would help you to protect you from hellfire. So the more layers that you develop, and this is a gain, a blessing, the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be given to us. Try to imagine if it is enough to do the obligatory prayer. This is an extra opportunity given to us to acquire more and more and more layers of taqwa. So one layer after another, one layer after another, one layer after another. And this is not given to us in other months. We can do some nawafil, no doubt of that. But now this is a congregational prayer. We have the opportunity to get more blessing and more blessing. Add to this, the layers that you gain from the fasting, particularly when you know that the fasting is not excluded to preventing yourself or prohibiting yourself from drinking and eating, although these are halal things, and also the intimacy with your spouse, which is all of them are halal things. But it gives you a good training that if you prevent yourself, if you prohibit yourself from doing the halal things, this can make a transition to the haram things. If you control yourself from absorbing and practicing and handling the halal things that are made lawful to you by Allah, you can apply this to the haram things. So it's a good period of training. You've trained yourself well enough to be away from the halal things, not the haram things in Ramadan. Of course, you, you keep away yourself from the haram things, but now the fasting is on the haram things, and on the halal things. So if you can do that on the halal issues, you can do this on the same thing on the haram issues. So it's a good training. Don't be fooled by what people say on the media or what people who don't have adequate knowledge or precise knowledge about Islam, who are just people, some speak nonsense to you. It's sometimes it is difficult to fast. It, it's not difficult. This has been going on throughout the history of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in just the ayah that I mentioned to you in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 183, that uh, yes, this had been prescribed on nations before you. So it's almost has been going on perhaps since, since long times people have been doing this. But unfortunately, because the weakness of some people nowadays, and they start talking on the media, particularly the secular ones, the so-called seculars, in other words, uh, they should be labeled correctly. The people who are not uh, doing, who are not performing Islam, well, they try to find excuses, and they present it in a, in a good way, in a, and that suits the kind of media that they are using in order to fool people. In fact, they are fooling nobody except themselves because every Muslim know the golden rule that says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does never ask any soul, any person to do something, to do something that it is not in his or her capacity. It's something unbelievable. Nobody can believe that the merciful God would ask you to do something that's not within your capacity. It's, you can see the contradiction here. How can God contradict himself by asking you to do things that they are not in your capacity? In reality, when you know that Allah is the most merciful, he is the one who 
asked you to do these tasks, to do these rituals, he knows the capacities that you have because he's the one who created you. He's the same one who created you, who knows everything that goes on in your body and in your soul, so he knows you quite well, very precisely. And therefore, based on this knowledge and based on the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do what is within your capacity. So we do thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. And we do, we submitted, we signed the contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we said that we are Muslims, we are going to surrender ourselves to all the obligations that you asked us to do. So we know that it is within our capacity and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful and we know that there are special cases like the cases of sickness and the cases of traveling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows those people who have these circumstances to break their fast according to some conditions. We do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again to give us some power and support to give us the ability to continue fasting this great month, hoping that inshallah we will end up in paradise. Ameen, ameen. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبل